Hello viewers, welcome to Bygramming YouTube channel. In this video I will demonstrate how to put a, a modern wheel on a vintage frame. The main problem that is faced when doing this sort of upgrade or repair in order to restore an old bicycle to, to function is the dropout spacing. Old frames, uh, I will put links on my, on my, from my website where all the measures are expressed nicely and uh, conveniently, but uh, just a rough explanation, uh, most uh, vintage frames have rear dropouts that are a bit narrower, about 126 millimeters is often seen, while modern hubs usually have uh, 130 millimeters uh, width, that is uh, over lock nut distance, uh, an old term for that. Modern hubs, uh, some with cartridge bearings, don't have lock nuts. They have uh, cartridge bearings, so th there's no need for lock nuts, but that term is still used. Uh, anyway, that is the distance that hub takes between the drop dropouts. So, m mountain bike, MTB, uh, MTB uh, hubs are 135 millimeters, while modern through axle ones are even wider, but those will not even be taken into consideration when uh, trying to restore an, a vintage frame and put it to use. But in this case, um, it is reasonable to try to make room for a 130 millimeter hub because that is not that much wider. Frame's geometry will not be that much uh, changed and it will be possible to start using that frame with components that are nowadays available. In order to achieve this, there are two ways. First one, which is, in my opinion, a preferable one, because it allows for a stronger wheel, and I will not get into details. We'll post links from my website on uh, wheel design and strength. Anyway, uh, this uh, widening of dropouts uh, makes uh, the frame uh, permanently wider to a 130 millimeters width or at least 128 millimeters, having 2 millimeters uh, narrower is not a problem, just not too much over that. It can be widened to put the wheel inside and no problems. No, not too much stress on the frame will be put. When widening the rear dropouts, I will make a separate video on how to do that, but when widening them, it is uh, important to realign the, the parts where the, the hub is fixed. I showed some improvised tools and uh, I will not get into details on how to do it here. It, it will be in a separate video. In this particular case, we have a, an MTB hub, which is 135 millimeters wide, uh, over lock nut distance, and it is a freewheel hub. Some more modern hubs have uh, free, free hub mechanisms, and uh, they have uh, quick release mounting system. This one is with a solid axle, but the quick release ones are also often seen and most good quality Shimano made are with, with such. So uh, in order to put it uh, in, inside a, a frame, if there is for any reason, if it is not possible to widen the, the dropouts, for example, an old aluminum frame where widening it is not as safe and advisable as it is with steel frames. The only option is to make the hub a bit narrower. Uh, now uh, I will explain how that is done in, with this uh, particular hub, but the procedure is the same practically for even the, the quick release mounted hubs. Just the only difference is that, <coughs> sorry, is that the, the axle needs to be shortened when using quick release hubs because otherwise quick release mechanism will not be able to hold the wheel tight firmly in place. So, so the, the axle needs to be shortened for as, as much uh, as the, the free hub uh, over lock distance is shortened and then centered and of course the threads need to be uh, cleaned after cutting it and shortening it. So it takes some, some patience. W one good way of cleaning the threads after cutting it is so that uh, to screw uh, 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 a nut onto the, the axle and uh, then do the cutting and then unscrew it over the cut place, filing it nicely, uh, a bit gently. First, 
and then the the screw <coughs> sorry the nut will uh, by itself especially if you lubricate it a bit uh, make sure that the the all the threads are are cleared that is that is a primitive way or you could use a, a thread cleaning tool for for that purpose uh, here it is important thing to consider that uh, from the right hand side there can be no uh, shortening of the distance because there is needed uh, minimal distance to accept the cassette or freewheel so with multi-geared bicycles so the only place where we can uh, remove some spacers and make the, the hub uh, narrower effectively is from the left hand side uh, that uh, creates another problem uh, it, it means that the uh, wheel's dish is, is altered and the whole rim will be, when we do that, moved a bit to the left. So we would have to tighten the right-hand right side spokes and perhaps loosen a bit the left-hand side spokes in order to move the rim a bit to the right since the whole wheel is practically, by removing spaces on the left side, moved to the left. This makes a less perfect... Uh, uh, sorry the right hand side spokes will then be at almost vertical angle and will need to have a lot higher tension than the left hand side spokes in order to move the rim even further to the right uh, and multi-geared hubs already have the rim moved a bit further to the right flange compared to the left flange and there is already at the start a, a difference in spoke bracing angle so this makes the situation even worse uh, I'm not perhaps explaining it best in words but I will post links in the video's description to, to uh, that explain this a bit better. Anyway, this procedure makes wheel a bit even uh, less strong, weaker, so uh, especially to lateral forces coming from the left hand side. So in my opinion, a better option whenever possible is to widen the rear dropouts. Here I'm showing uh, the way I would, I, I think it's best if the wheels uh, overlock and distance needs to be changed without widening the dropouts. I am removing one spacer from the left hand side because this hub is 135 millimeters and I need to put it within 126 millimeter dropout. Here I've taken out some, uh, like I said, a, a wider spacer and now I'm checking to see if I have achieved the required, the required uh, distance. Uh, when doing this, I am uh, I would have to, of course, set the preload of the bearings after after everything is done and pay attention to that. And I also need to center the axle. For these solid axles, this is, it is not as critical. I'm doing this centering of the axle just for aesthetic reasons. So it protrudes uh, about the same amount at each side. But uh, like I said, for hollow axles that are used with quick release hubs, it is necessary to center them and shorter them before centering uh, in order to allow the quick release lever to hold the wheel firmly in place because it needs to uh, touch the frame and having an axle that is too long <coughs> sorry, will prevent the quick release from, from reaching the frame in the first place. So here I'm taking some cone wrenches and trying to loosen it all so I can center the the axle. And here's what I'm what I'm doing is that I'm uh, screwing the the right hand cone inside and loosening the left hand cone. Of course, this wheel is re reversed in this video, but the part where you can see where the free wheel is attached is the right hand side part. I'm holding it with my right right hand in this video. There, it's that's about centered now. So I can now tighten one side of the of the axle uh, one lock nut, and then use the other side to uh, finely tune the the preload and set it. And uh, setting up uh, preload is also explained in my video about hub overhaul and in my uh, on my website. Again, I will post links in the video description section. There, I have tightened this part, this side, and then I'm trying to see if there's any play, if I need to set more preload, increase it or decrease it. I'm trying to 
move the the axle up and down and see if there's any any play or if it is too tight feeling it by hand with with these solid axles all the play should be eliminated in this phase while with quick release axles uh, checking for free play is done when the quick release is closed and tightened there should be some play with quick release axles and hubs uh, when the quick release is not tightened that's normal because quick release further pushes the the cones uh, against each other and creates some some more preload this, this wheel does have an, an extremely now uh, poor bracing angle of the right hand side spokes they are almost vertical not sure if that's uh, that's visible in, from the video but it is a 36 spoke wheel with a very strong rim that can take a lot of spoke tension so the left hand side spokes although with much lower tension than the right hand side spokes will still have enough tension not to become slack and loose and loosen even further in time after riding and this particular bicycle will be used for road cycling so it will probably be fine but like I said it is preferable to to widen the, the dropouts here I'm using a relatively rough method of finally uh, adding a bit of preload by just tightening the, the lock nuts and if that is not enough I would have had to first loosen the lock nut then screw the the cone a bit inside further and then retighten it but in this case it, it seems okay so I have now tightened the, the lock nut almost fully checking for play again and since there is a bit of too much preload I, I try now to move the, the cones a bit away from each other counterclockwise turning them and seeing if there's any change before I completely tighten the, the lock nut and consider the job done if there is much modification of preload needed it is best to loosen the lock nut completely and just turn the, the cone where, where you think it's needed but these fine tunings can be done using this method shown here I, I've overdone it a bit so now I'm tightening from the outside again from the lock nuts <coughs> these are very thick lock nuts and very thick uh, um, cones so as well as the axle so they are they're not damaged by doing it this way but the safest thing is to completely loosen the lock nut then move the the cone a bit inside or or unscrew it depending on the <coughs> situation with the preload and then tighten it i will get it right eventually this is about it and the wheel is now ready to be mounted with a with a cassette and mounted onto the wheel and it, it had turned out fine after some months of riding in spite of this but I, like I said uh, preferable ways widening the dropouts that's it thank you for watching cheers